guys. Today I talk about my custom extremely high powered electric bike. All right, so this is my uh, electric converted mountain cycle San Andreas. Uh, this is a bike I built about four years back. Now, for those of you purists that are going to cry heresy, why would anyone, you know, it's, uh, why would anybody cut apart such a, a valuable frame and, uh, and ruin it? Well, this frame was in really rough shape. There was a lot of metal damage on it. Uh, the shock was fried. The bearings were, I mean, just everything was bad on this bike. So I got this frame very cheap on eBay. It was a couple hundred bucks. It wasn't the, the you know, 800 to whatever thousand uh, dollars that a, a good mint frame would be. This was a rough frame. And uh, my purchasing it and um, re, uh, repurposing it into an electric bike has really saved its life. So for those of you that are about to uh, yell at me in the comments section, uh, this is sort of like doing a resto mod on a car that's a rusted out pile of junk. Uh, it, this frame was, it really wasn't worth anything as from an originality standpoint. So, but um, anyway, I um, this bike was built oh back about four years ago i think i started on it and it took about a year and i've been riding it ever since it's uh you can see it's it's a little on the filthy side i just broke it out of mothballs and and um, i'm gonna start going through it for this year's riding season i've already taken the battery packs out and balance uh, tested all of the cells uh, all the cells are balanced just fine there's no battery management system on this bike uh, what i do is i have the low voltage cutoff set in the uh, the motor controller what EV guys consider the inverter I have that set so that the battery will never go below about 25 percent state of charge and I have the um, the charger set to never charge the battery pack over about 85 or 90 percent state of charge so with these lithium polymer uh, flat pouch cells as long as you keep the battery within that range I found that the cells never go out of balance so twice a season I pull the cover off access the the balance tap leads and balance test the packs but they're just never an issue so but that's already been done for this season so I need to go through it and do the rest of the mechanical work but um, uh, but this is the bike I, I did a, a full walk around video on my other channel but I may as well do that uh, for you guys here on this channel as well in case you haven't seen it and um, so this uh, this bike started life again as a, an early uh, Gen 1 uh, mountain cycle San Andreas this was actually a frame that I fell in love with back when it was released uh, when I was a uh, younger guy and couldn't afford to buy one so uh, I, I watch eBay and and uh, Craigslist and that looking for them and I finally found one that was in really rough shape that I could modify so I cut the frame off in this section here and welded on this over under double spar frame uh, that uh, contains the battery packs so you can see the, the width when you sight down. No, my legs don't hit the pack. It's, it's plenty, plenty narrow enough for that. So uh, the, uh, the battery pack goes the full width. It protrudes through the frame. It is a uh, nominal voltage is 44 volts. It's about 49 volts hot off the charger. 12 cell lithium polymer battery pack that is 24 amp hours. So if you do the math, that's you know somewhere roughly one kilowatt hour or so, and um, this bike is good for oh gosh, I would say in the range of about twenty five miles of hard riding on a charge. I don't know, I never run it out. I, I typically go for about a fourteen mile ride or so and come back, and I've only used maybe fifty five sixty percent of the charge. So. Um, it is um, it, it, this is a, a different bike in that it doesn't use your your typical electric bike components. Uh, uh, you can see on the other side here there is a belt drive to a jack shaft. Uh, that belt drive uh, I can go anywhere from four to one at the highest gear ratio to seven to one at the at the uh, steepest ratio. Uh, that drives a half inch diameter jack shaft that goes across to a, um, a clicking BMX freewheel. So when you coast, though the electric drive chain uh, is, is always in motion, is always live, it will freewheel at this point. So you're not driving the motor if the throttle is in the off position. You'll notice it does have two chains. It's got your typical pedal chain on the right 
uh, to a normal cassette and then the electric drive chain on the left and you can see that the uh, that sprocket is mounted it, it's sandwiched between the brake disc and the hub and um, it uh, I make a, I manufacture my own adapter that steps that sprocket over three quarters of an inch to get the chain closer to the spokes and out of the way of the brake caliper uh, they call that a top hat adapter because from the side it resembles a top hat and um, so then I use just a normal bicycle chain um, I typically use a BMX chain although in this case this um, this clamp and a couple other things a couple screw heads get in the way of the edge of the chain and a BMX chain is a little wide so uh, in this instance uh, I'm actually using a derailleur style uh, chain uh, but um, you know either way uh, BMX chains work fine and then what I do is I spin on the lathe uh, skateboard wheels into idlers so this idler here at the top is just designed to keep the chain from hitting the pivot here when the suspension travels up and down and um, so that side of the chain is under tension under power and then it comes off the free wheel it loops around this lower wheel which is spring loaded that's on a swinging arm to hold tension on the chain then it goes up and around this idler and the reason it zigzags so much and rather than just pushing down on it is with the travel of the suspension there's more chain expansion and contraction more growth and shrinkage uh, than you would typically have because of the fact that the pivot is over the chain most electric bikes the pivot would be between the top and bottom runs of the chain and then you have very little chain growth issues but when you've got a pivot that's so high like this uh, as the suspension goes up, that tension wheel really moves a lot, and then when it drops, it, it moves back. So that tension wheel is required, and I wanted to pinch the chain as close together, as near the, that pivot as was reasonably possible to minimize that, uh, that chain growth and shrinking effect with suspension movement. So uh, typical bicycle downhill racing stuff in the front, uh, White Brothers um, forks, which I'm a dealer for, and Hope four piston hydraulic calipers and 203 millimeter rotor so hope is probably the best quality that I've found uh, carbon handlebars uh, the way this bike functions this is a Magura uh, potentiometer uh, twist grip throttle that uh, is designed for scooters e-bikes and that kind of thing and the lead goes to this interface box what this interface box does is it allows the use of of equipment designed for the radio control industry to be used uh, in a, um, a land-based application. So uh, basically this is a controller designed for a large-scale radio controlled airplane. It is a brushless sensorless motor. There are no hull position sensors in the motor. The motor is an Astroflight 3220 model. It's an industrial motor designed for large-scale radio control uh, applications and I have um, I make my own machined billet aluminum cooling fans, but uh, the cooling fan draws about 60 watts of power uh, un under full RPM. And in this application, this motor is so under stressed, it, it doesn't even warm up. So I'm not using the cooling fan, but that's what the extra shaft and venting is for. I have these motors custom made for me by Astroflight, the manufacturer in California. The drive unit here, the machined and black anodized drive unit here uh, I have manufactured for me the motor slides through this this section here it slides all the way through and that clamps around the motor can and on a brushless motor the windings are attached to the can not to the armature so the can gets hot not the armature and when you clamp around the can this aluminum drive unit becomes a heat sink to pull the heat off of the motor can right into the framework of the unit and ultimate, ultimately into the frame of the bike the motor runs nice and cool it's just 10 degrees above ambient at most probably five degrees above ambient most often uh, this motor is rated by astroflight at, at four kilowatts but that's continuous in this application i see peaks of about eight kilowatts or so um, so that's that um, now this rc based controller or as we in the EV industry would consider it a, an inverter it's looking for a pulsed signal from an RC receiver 
So we get back to this interface box I mentioned before. This interface box is a product that I manufacture, and what it does is it takes the resistive signal from the throttle and converts it into a pulsed signal. If you were to see it on a, on a uh, oscilloscope, it's a pulsed signal. Uh, I believe it's a one to two second, uh, one to two millisecond pulse width sweep that it looks for through the, the range of throttle input. That's what this is looking for. This controller is looking for a pulsed signal from an RC receiver. So I have, um, I manufacture this interface box to take the resistive signal and transfer that to a, to convert it to a pulsed signal that the RC receiver can recognize. So on the right side of the bike, I just have a, a fixed plug here. It's an XT90 for those of you that are familiar with radio control stuff. There's no, there's very little support electronics on this thing. All I do is plug it in. You hear the motor initiate and that, uh, that means that it's initialized and ready to go. I have this this plug, it's barely plugged in right now, but I have that set in that what looks like awkward position so that while I'm riding, if there's an issue, I can reach down and pull up to unplug this lead. And I've had to do that actually twice. One time, the motor leads shorted against this carbon fiber uh, panel right here. As I was riding, I, I heard shorting and I could see it sparking, so I reached up and unplugged that, which turns out I didn't need to do, but I did it anyway. And um, so now uh, it, I make sure that they're away. I, I actually have, um, I took the batteries out recently, so I pulled it off, but I normally have a pad that I uh, stick on this to protect that, that edge. So, but that's what that shorted spot is from. And after that had happened, it had stressed the controller, and I didn't know that, but about two or three weeks later while riding, this controller burst into flames, and uh, just it was flaring out the side, so I had to reach down and unplug it. And so this is there for safety reasons, that plug in that up position, so I can reach down and pull it. Uh, the bike is great. It is... Um, it, it pulls wheelies. I mean, it, I actually have to be really careful because it wheelies pretty soundly. And um, so that's the bike, and um, I thoroughly enjoy it. I uh, Every summer I ride it like crazy. I probably have, well, I've worn out a couple sets of tires. I've got, I don't know, thousands of miles on this bike. So I've been riding it every time I possibly can throughout the summer and uh, you know starting at about mid 50s in temperature I'll go ahead and and uh, just don myself in some warm clothes and go for a ride it is currently geared for 32 miles per hour hot off the charger and um, it settles into about 30 miles per hour by the time the battery drops in voltage and I'm on my way home I have the pedal side gearing set up for um, so that in high gear I can still pedal along with it. I don't use this as a motorcycle. I actually ride it as a bicycle. I pedal my brains out. When I get home, I'm pretty much exhausted. I use the electric motor mainly to increase the amount of speed that I can ride the bike at, but I do pedal as much as I can. Uh, this bike keeps me pretty physically fit. So that's the bike, and... Um, I am absolutely thrilled with it, couldn't be happier, and I, I highly recommend electric bikes to you know anyone that uh, enjoys being outdoors and maybe wants to cover more miles than their fitness level would allow.